Hello Internet! My name is Hazel from Hazel Nutty Games and welcome to First Date With. This is where we spend some time with the game and decide whether we'd like to pursue it further. Today we're investigating the brand new Magic 2014, the latest iteration of the Magic the Gathering PC games by Wizards of the Coast. This game is available for Windows PC through Steam and it's possible that we'll see an iPad version in the upcoming months. No guarantees on that front. So, if you played the last year's version, Magic 2013, the updates since then include menu streamlining, new decks, new cards in the old decks, um, cutscenes, other shinies. A particular thing that I really noticed was new was this whole sealed play mechanic. We'll get back to that a little bit later. This particular version of the game is very noob friendly, so if you've never played Magic the Gathering or you're new to it and you're a little fuzzy on some of the concepts, uh, some of the rules, this is an excellent product to introduce you to the mechanics and the universe. Single player mode. Um, whenever you're in a game in single player mode, you can zoom in on each individual card, read them at your own leisure, which really helps understand the games. I found that whenever I'm playing Magic with friends that are more experienced than me, they have a tendency to go very quickly and it's hard to keep up and it's hard to learn things when you don't have a chance to really look through things and figure out how they work. This lets you do that. Wonderful. Of course, if you are a veteran and you don't want any of this hand-holding kablooey like the tutorials and the tips and all that, you can turn it all off in the settings. So let's take a look at the campaign. Um, as you can see, you have different chapters. All of these are different worlds within the Magic Universe. And in each individual chapter, you see most of these are locked. It is a linear campaign progression system. In each of the chapters, you have a number of matches, um, which you progress through one at a time. As you progress through those matches, you are going to unlock um, new decks to use, as well as cards for the decks you're using. Many of the matches that you will against are encounters, which are not technically Magic the Gathering fights per se, like not against like another player, but against a deck that might not necessarily be legal but has a very strong theme, and the deck will play the same cards in the same order, so you can kind of create a strategy to counter it. So let's jump into one so you can see what the interface looks like. This is the next one on my list. Overcome it. Wonderful. So you can select your deck here, you can see most of these decks are locked. Um, I have the Chandra Firewave deck just because that was a pre-order bonus. All of these decks can be unlocked fully with all their cards for 99 cents. Alternately, you unlock the decks one time as you beat the boss that corresponds to that deck, and then you unlock an additional 30 cards to use in that deck while you're just using the deck in various fights. So let's- I have no idea what this is, so no guarantees I'm gonna win this, guys. I'm not actually great at this game. I'm gonna try the green deck, it's nice and simple, and we will start the encounter. So there are pop-up tooltips in the tutorial that walk you through every single aspect of magic. Um, I would strongly recommend that you do them if you've never played before. In the interest of speed, I'm going to not... I'm just going to click right through them and show you what the interface looks like. So it shows you your hand. You can mulligan or you can keep it. I'm going to keep this because I've got a good amount of mana. I've got three, which should be just fine. Um, you can draw a new hand of seven cards only once. After that, it drops you down to six and then five and then four and so forth. So here's our menu screen. We've got our battlefield in the middle here. You can see your enemy portrait at the top right hand corner. He played one of those guys. Sounds good. Um, that'll show you the amount of cards remaining in his deck, it'll show you the amount of cards in his hand, as well as his graveyard. These little dots here are the phases in each individual turn. So you can clearly see where you are and what's going on. If there's nothing for it to do, it'll simply time out. You can stop the timer any time if you have an instant you want to perform, for example, or any actions like that. Most of the decks in this game are pre-built, aside from the whole sealed mode. Um, however, you can unlock, like I said before, 30 cards additionally for each deck. And you can kind of mix and match and have as many cards as you want in it, really, but it's best to keep it around 60. So you can remove cards you don't like, adding cards that you do like when you unlock them, and customize your deck that way. You can then use any of these decks that you've customized in the multiplayer, or for use in your campaign, things like that. Challenges as well, which we'll get to later. There are a ton of different game modes in this, which is wonderful. Lots and lots of content. So it's my turn again. Any card that you can play gets light lit up in a very convenient orange. So you can see I've got enough mana for this. I have not enough mana for these. This is getting slightly out of control. So let's get throw another one out here. So from the looks of it, this encounter is based so far on a ton of Shadowborn Apostles. Presumably once they get six out, she's gonna go for a demon. All right. More info. I have summoning sickness, of course. Um, with any tip, you can click okay if you don't think you're gonna remember it, or if you've got it and don't wanna see it anymore, you can click don't show it again. In the settings, in the main settings of the game, you can go and reset all those. So if you've gotten confused and you just feel like you're stuck, you can certainly reset those tips and see them all over again. More apostles. This person is very, very creative. Wonderful. And extra apostles. So our hand's down to one. So she's running out of apostles to play. We got three mana, so we can now throw a blocker or a prey upon. 
Let's do the blocker first, and then we'll pray upon to take out at least one of these next time. It's not going to make a big difference. Uh, let's go ahead and attack, see what happens. Uh, you will have an attack with all button when you have multiple creatures you can attack with, so if you've built up an army and just want to smash the face with it and not think too hard about it, that's certainly an option for you in this interface. Uh, your health is in a super cool curvy bar. Everything's highlight. All the information is there in a really clean manner, but it's not messy. So she's schmucking me with a whole bunch of stuff. And I can't block with this. Why can't I block with that? I'm gonna zoom in and find out in just a minute. I never claim to be an expert at this game, guys. Alright. I can only block creatures with flying with this card. That's what's going on. I see. Okay. So, this encounter appears to be doing nasty things to me. It brought a demon, which is destroying my doodle. And a few creature cards in your graveyard. Sacrifice. Creature. So if I could empty his graveyard, then he'd have to start sacking things. Unfortunately, this is a green deck, and I don't think I have anything that's going to be able to do that. If you are an experienced magic player, there is a decent amount of fun to be had here, probably mostly in the sealed mode for you, um, in the challenges, which can be super, super challenging, and the um, multiplayer as well. So we've got Bramble Crush for a non-creature permanent. Right now, that's just a land, which isn't going to do much good for us. But Master of the Wild Hunt is quite neat. He has the ability to summon a wolf. Well, it can summon lots of wolves, and you can also use those to deal damage at will. Wonderful. Abilities, and it'll tell me all about all the stuff. So, I think you get the basic idea. This could take a little while. Matches tend to take between 10 and 10 minutes, and as long as you really draw them out for. I am probably going to lose this one, so to save myself some face, I am going to concede that and go out to show you some of the other modes. So, now that you get the interface, like you get the idea. Um, there's lots of cutscenes of voice acting. There is a story in the single player campaign. If you're into that kind of thing, it's not bad. All right, so in the single player, not only is there campaign, there's sealed play. So what sealed play is like, and this is a new feature. If you've ever played draft magic in real life, it's a lot like that. Um, don't mind that. <laughs> you can build a deck by cre create a new deck. It gives you a bunch of booster packs to open. You do not have to pay for these. These are not DLC open the booster packs, or there's an unwrap all button, but this just lets you see them, look through them one at a time, and kind of recreates that awesome booster pack opening feeling. They just missed the smell. Um, from that time, I've got 84 cards in my pool, and then I can kind of choose and pick them into my draft deck. If you are lazy, like me, you can pick a couple cards that you think are really cool, and then have the AI actually auto-complete for you. Um, you can sort by the different colors, and it'll actually have an overall bar that'll show you how strong your deck is. So if you've got, like, really terrible synergy in the deck that you're building, it'll let you know so that you can kind of rethink it and start again. You can use your sealed... There is sealed play in multiplayer as well, so you can do this against other people, which is very, very cool. So I already made one of these, and by I already made one of these, I mean I picked a couple cards and had it auto-complete for me, which gave me an awesome deck strength. <laughs> play with sealed deck. So this is the sealed deck campaign. You can test it against the Serving the Nest, which is a cock encounter from one of the previous games, and then you can progress through the different levels of um, the different matches against different planeswalkers, some of which will give you booster packs to add to your deck. That's the idea. It's challenges as well. Challenges are puzzles. It puts you in a specific position and gets you to win the game in X amount of turns, and um, some of these positions are very, very challenging. It'll give you limited land, it'll give you just only a couple different things you can do, or a couple things that it looks like you can do, and then you have to use your all of your wits to get yourself out of it. These are really good if you think you are the absolute bomb at magic. Some of these are incredibly challenging, or so they were in the last game. I haven't tried these ones yet because they are going to kick my butt. There are also advanced challenges if you are super, super, super pro. Excellent. Custom game, of course, you can create any game that you want. If you want to test out your deck against another specific deck, you can do that. Alright, our deck manager, which allows you to, for example, this is the first deck that we're using, I unlocked a card for it. So I can select that deck, open up the deck manager, and it's going to show me on the top here um, the cards that are locked and the cards that are available. One thing that I don't necessarily like is whenever you unlock a card, it immediately adds it to your deck, and that will put your deck number above. So I've got 61 cards in this deck right now, when it's really better to stay close to 60, so I would now have to go and look through for things that I'd want to remove in order to get it to 60 again. Um, I almost wish it would just leave the unlocked cards up here so I could do this all at once 
whenever I wanted to and also not forget which cards were actually added. You can unlock the full deck um, whenever you want for 99 cents and you can also make it shinier. You can get a foil conversion for an additional 99 cents if that is your thing. So if you really want to feel like spending real money to make your digital cards look better then that sounds like a personal problem. Arguably one of the best features that a game like this could possibly have is online multiplayer and this really delivers. Creating match allows you to make the match type that you want and host it and then other people can just jump right into it. Custom match allows you to of course set up like more specific uh, rules and you have the option of free for all two headed giant or seal play in any of these. Quick match just get, lets you pick what kind of match you want and then it'll, pu it'll push you into somebody else's hosted match. I'm not going to do this right now because I'm sure that nobody really is interested in seeing me lose horribly, but I encourage you to pick up this game and try it yourself. If anybody would like, to would like to challenge me on Steam, send me a private message, I'm sure we can make it happen. Alright, in conclusion, to conclude my thoughts on this, Magic 2014, it's a polished digital iteration of Magic the Gathering. It's got a strong campaign, it's got online multiplayer, it is friendly to all different skill levels, uh, there's multiplayer leaderboards, there are achievements, there's a ton of replayability in this. It is available on Steam today for $10 in Canadian or US dollars, seven pounds in the UK, and presumably what's a somewhat equivalent amount of euros, I couldn't figure that out. A great representation of a very good deep CCG, and I strongly recommend it. My name is Hazel from Hazelnutty Games, thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe for updates on the latest episodes of First Date With, and leave a comment on this video for any future games you'd like to see a video done for. Have a very happy birthday! Bye!